Hi, good morning everyone. It's Brenda Quintana here coming to you live from the Beehive. Some of you may be watching this that's already recorded. If you're watching this on YouTube, it will be recorded. Uh, if you're watching it right now at 10 a.m. on Tuesday, I'm live. So I'm happy uh, for everyone that joins me. It's so nice to see uh, there's that there's some numbers watching me while I'm doing this. That makes me very happy. And there's one person already here, one of my, my favorite uh, people. Janine is here this morning. Um, she usually joins in so yay thank you for being here um, and I'll say a big global uh, hello and uh, welcome to everyone else that's here today it's Tuesday again and on uh, Tuesday we case a card out of the catalog and uh, today we're casing out of the holiday catalog and it was my pick so that's kind of fun when I get to pick a card I also have fun um, casing Kalina's choices as well sometimes she challenges me though so um, um, today I guess uh, was a little easier because I chose the card so um, so uh, I was working again I didn't realize that at the time that I was working again with the same steps that, that I had worked with the week before and it's called the Christmas quilt stamp set and I think this is a really popular uh, set and bundle for Americans because a lot of people do quilting as a hobby and uh, it usually involves getting together with some other people too because um, you know you have quilting bees and stuff I don't quilt myself but I love the geometric patterns that are in some quilts and so it's kind of a fun um, framelit set and it's also a fun stamp set to work with so um, I'm gonna flip the camera around and I'm gonna show you the card that we're casing today and I really hope that you will join us uh, over on the Facebook group and show me what you've made I've noticed recently that our numbers um, uh, like our numbers in terms of the group have grown a lot but sometimes with Facebook we don't always get um, notifications when there's new posts and stuff like that it's kind of um, create like there's an algorithm that Facebook uses so not everyone always sees the Facebook posts each week um, and I would love to see some more people posting their cards because I've noticed those numbers have dwindled um, a few people only posting each week and I love to see what you guys do with the same card that we're working on so um, I hope you get on there and uh, post your card and um, so let me turn this around and I'll show you what I did this week so if you get motion sick just close your eyes for a second okay let me turn this around where's my little turny thing there we go it's constantly moving that little turn button so I, I know it seems like I don't know what I'm doing it's just like I have to keep up with it and when people move things and you don't know that they they don't tell you they're gonna move something and then all of a sudden they are um, moved okay if you are had your eyes closed you can now um, open them I am stable now so this is the card right here that we're casing today and um, so it has an, an kind of a square focal point right here it has like a banner in the background and some doilies and so I thought that would be kind of fun actually you know what this made me do it made me realize what this die right here there's this little die right here this little square or it's a rectangle with three dots in it that is supposed to be a spool to wrap thread on so that's what these little guys are I had no clue that that's what that was for um, but I just realized that I uh, yesterday while I was making my card so anyway I made this card and I you know I had the square um, as my focal point as well and I'm using the same uh, stamp set and die set but it's a completely different card as you can tell they look completely different so it's neat that you can use the same card and make a completely uh, different looking card so um, this is the um, the set or the 
bundle that I'm using, the Christmas quilt stamp set and then the framelit set. And when you buy them together, you save 10%. So um, if you're considering buying one, have a look at the other because it's nice to get them um, together at the same time. So with this card, I think the easiest way to start off um, is to do the um, embossing and the die cutting first and then we'll bring everything else together. So let me bring in my Big Shot. Let me turn it like this. Um, so I've got my regular platform on here and I've removed the that little thin plate so I'm on my base platform. I've got a cutting plate down. I've got my quilt top embossing folder and this is a piece of Whisper White cardstock that is cut to four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. This is going to cover the entire surface of the front of my card so it's the same size as my card base but I because this embossing folder creates quite it, there's quite a bit of embossing on it 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 curls your cardstock quite a bit. So you wouldn't want to emboss the front of your card base because it's going to kind of make your, um, uh, like your, the front a little bit bendy and a little bit unstable. So I prefer to do an extra layer for this particular one. So I'm just going to put that piece in there, put my embossing folder on there. I always like to put my, uh, fold of the embossing folder through first. I don't know why, but I think that's how we were originally taught, and I don't know if that really makes a difference, but that's what I do. And then I run this through. And last week I used the same embossing folder, and I know many of you really liked it. And uh, if you have questions for me, um, think about it while I am working on this card and write them down so you can ask them to me afterwards. So I go, I'll go back and check um, my messages afterwards. So this is the beautiful embossing that it does and that will be on the front of the card. So now I would like to switch to my, my, my magnetic platform and um, bring my cutting plates back in. And uh, the reason I want to use my magnetic platform is because we're going to be die cutting on this Dazzling Diamonds Glimmer Paper. And we're going to be cutting on the back side. And it's kind of a little bit shiny, so it's a little slick. So when I bring in these two pieces, this is the outline of the flower and the inside of the flower. When I'm die cutting this, I want to be able to um, keep these little guys in place while I'm die cutting. So plopping my um, inside down and then just kind of um, making sure my outline is even around there. I'm going to cut both of them at the same time. And guess what? I didn't turn them the right way. When you're die cutting, you always need to make sure you put your cutting surface down, which is that little, um, that little lip. That needs to go down. So that would have been, that wouldn't have worked. <laughs> but uh, I caught that before I did it. So you just wanna make sure it's centered. It's easier to move the outline than it is to move the inside. So I kinda just center that. Might be a little bit off because I hit it again. Now, are you guys also perfectionists? I kind of am. It's not a good thing. I wish I, I, I wasn't because um, it causes unhappiness because when you can't get something perfect then you're not happy and that's not good so I try I try hard not to always be perfect and, and not that I ever could achieve perfection but you know what I mean like I try not to do it but I still it's like in me so here's my flower and I've got to pop out these little inside pieces so I kind of just do this on my hand so that they don't go everywhere. It would be easier if I pop them onto the countertop or my tabletop, but so there is my outline piece and it's got that little bit of glimmer in it. And that's why I did it that way. Um, oh no, I forgot to get one little thing. I need to run across the room. I knew I was gonna forget something. I need a little piece of lemon lime. You know what I could do though? kind of would be cheating, but I think I'm going to do it. 
So I have to create a little banner, right? And this banner, um, it's gonna be in the center of my card. So why don't I just take my lemon lime piece out of the center of this? No one will ever know, right? Okay, trying to break the habit of being perfectionist. Like, no one will know that there's a die cut flower out of the center of this, right? Except you guys. No one's gonna tell, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and die cut that out. So that's gonna be the backing for this piece right here. Okay, so let me get rid of my big shot. All right. So the next piece that we want to do to get done is this this piece right here. So I kind of I kind of cheated because you can use the die to create this piece, but I noticed that. The designer series paper, it's called uh, the Quilted Christmas Designer Series paper. It had these little patterns on it that were the exact size of the framelit. And I'm like, oh, that's so easy. Why don't I use that? So basically, you take this paper, it's a six by six sheet, and you cut it into three by three squares. So you get a square like this, which is what I'm going to use right there. How clever, right? But because I kind of cheated. I wanted to show you what it would look like if I did it with the um, die cuts. So it's just a little bit different, but you could actually make it look the same. So I, um, you use two pieces. You use these two pieces, and that will cut the frame that looks like this, okay? So you are actually, like you can see that there's a little bit of an extra piece, which, I don't mind, but if you didn't like that you wanted it to look exactly like this, you could snip away the corners, right? Or And the in-between pieces. You could um, take away uh, that outside. Um, but I actually like the way it looked. So I die cut the frame, and then I, I put the um, inside through one more time with real red. Um, I actually mounted the frame onto garden green, a garden green piece. Then I filled in with, um, I cut this through, this piece through again with real red. And then I took those pieces and just filled them in. So the nice thing about this one is if you didn't want to do it in a Christmas theme, you could do it in whatever colors you want. You could do it like in pastels or you could do it in earth tones. So, and you could alternate colors too. So, you know, if you want it to be quick and easy, you can cut up the designer series paper. But if you want to make it look however you want, you could still do this card with the dies and create your own color scheme. So I just wanted to show you that. So that is my little trick for that. Let's do the banner next. So you notice I, I cut this out of my banner piece. So just pretend this is all one sheet. And this banner piece will be two and a half inches by four and three quarter inches. To get the little banner on the bottom, what I did was I measured, I needed the center point. This is a centering ruler. I like to have one. If you don't have a centering ruler, that's fine. If you have a centering ruler, then you just, you make sure the marks on either side. So I've got like one and a quarter and one and a quarter on either side. This first line here is three quarters of an inch up. So if I put that line to the edge of my cardstock, I've got one and a quarter and one and a quarter on either side of this. That will be my centering point. And then I just make a mark right there in the center at zero and that will be my center point um, three quarters of an inch up. If you have a regular ruler, I'll show you how to do that too. You just measure over one and a quarter inches, make yourself a mark, and then measure up three quarters of an inch from the bottom and just make sure those two marks line up. Then, either way, whatever ruler you have, you're just going to make yourself a line from that mark to the corners and that will create your little 
banner bottom and then you just take your paper snips and cut 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 and there's my friend Amy Wilson who used to come to my classes live that's so cool I love that some of you get to see me in action now um, uh, that used to come to my classes. I don't do uh, in-person classes anymore because we moved and um, I started to do everything online. So you will see, I've got a big hole out of this, but just pretend that's not there because that's going to be covered, okay? So then let's just put this whole card together. And I've got my card base. This is 11 inches by four and a quarter inches. I've scored it in half at the five and a half inch mark. You need to fold it. You need a bone folder, or you can smooth down the fold with your fingers, but a bone folder is the easiest way to do this. I've got my layer that I've embossed, and I'm going to use Tombow to add this layer on here. And we just this on. I'm trying to get it straight because if it's not straight then my perfectionistic tendency will not be happy. Tamp this down. Okay, let's get this banner piece loaded up. So um, I've got my little um, quilt piece and I'm going to need to back it up with some real red to get that edge and this is a three and a quarter inch square so let me just put a little bit of Tombow I'm going to try and get, use a light touch because this is um, paper and I don't want it to wrinkle up Tombow is usually pretty good but you just want to have a light hand when you're using thinner papers so I'm just adding that to my real red piece and then I'm going to get some doilies right here. So I take a doily and I cut it in half and then I cut it in half again because all you need is a quarter of um, a quarter of the doily for the top and the bottom. So the best way to get this on here, I guess I could use Tombow for this too. So I'm just going to put a bit of Tombow right up at the top. And I'm going to, oh, what am I doing? I'm not putting it on, on here. Uh -huh. It has to go on the back of here. So this is going to be stuck to my base. Just hold on one second. I need to put it on here. So I need a little bit of Tombow on my real red piece. Oh, my brain today. Uh, okay. So I just need to put this on here. I'm glad I caught that before I had to recut a banner. Okay, so, and then I just need, I'll just put a bit of Tombow right on my doily. How's that? And scoot it up. I just want like just a wee bit of doily showing. Janine says I'm cracking her up. Yes, I know. I'm having one of those days, like really, truly, I just like woke up today and I was like, the world is just spinning too fast for me. Slow down. Like, I just want to take things and make them perfect. And like everyone around me is just like going so fast, going so fast. And I'm just like, I can't keep up. So I'm having one of those mornings where I'm like, ah, I just want to like, you know, revel in the details instead of like, rushing through things and and I I'm just having one of those mornings where it's just like so much so anyway let me stick this piece on here first like that since I've already got Tombow on here okay <laughs> love this big hole out of my banner piece that's just yeah that's me trying not to be perfect so let me just center this on here and then we can stick this piece right on here. So let me put Tombow mainly on the center piece because this is what's going to catch onto here. And put that down. 
And then we just need our little, see how, how right now it looks nice, but it looks a little better if I put a little extra thing on here. So I'm gonna take this little piece and I'm just going to very carefully put some Tombow on the back. The back of this glimmer paper is like, it's really glossy. So I'm just going to just put a little bit on the back of that. Take my flower, line it up with my fingers on all of the petals. All right. Tamp it down. Hopefully it will stay and not move. Until that glue dries, the glossy paper really makes it a little bit slidey. And then I'll just put Tombow on the back of this. And then I can add it to my piece. Tamp, tamp, tamp. And then, last but not least, I want to put a rhinestone jewel. I'm just going to grab one of the largest ones. And I'm going to put it right in the center. Like that. And there is the card. It, I mean, that wasn't hard. You know, if you don't screw it up in the middle like me, then uh, it's not hard. I like the use of the paper uh, because that speeds things up a little bit. But it also looks cool if you use those um, die cuts. So then you have more flexibility in the colors. Actually, the Designer Series paper, this um, it's called Quilted Christmas, it also comes with has a green with red, but it also has a red with green piece. So you have um, quite a few of these squares that you can cut up because this is six by six and then that creates a three by three. So you have more than just uh, the one pattern. So I think it's kind of fun if you can cheat sometimes and make a quicker card, but this one also looks nice. This one, in person, it has more texture to it because these layers back here are like open spaces. So this one's a little bit more detailed, so that's cool. So let me turn you guys around. Get this situated. Here's my view this morning. It's an overcast day, and we're supposed to get a lot of rain tonight, which it's okay. We need rain. It's been a little dry. So let me turn you guys around. Okay. Well, I hope um, you guys need to post something. I, I hope I'm going to challenge you to post something this week because I want to see what you guys make. Get out your stamps. You know, it doesn't have to be a Christmas card. It can be a card using things from the annual catalog. And uh, I want to see what you guys make with this. It's a nice square focal point. Um, you know, the one thing that I didn't show you that I actually did um, in, in the inside of the car, uh, this is going to be backwards, I think. Uh, yeah, it will be backwards. But I stamped the, the greeting from the, um, the stamp set on the inside, so I forgot to do that. But you can do that afterwards. Um, I like it. Have yourself a merry little Christmas, and I think that matches nicely with the, the quilt theme. Um, so get out those stamps and join our Casing Tuesday Facebook group. Um, if you do not know where that is, go look in the description of this video, no matter where it is on Facebook or YouTube, I will have a link to the Facebook group and you can ask to join and then we will approve you. And then you can share your card with us. And this is every Tuesday. We've been doing this now uh, on the Facebook group for over a year and we're we're very good about doing it every single week. So mark it on your calendar that you can do this with us every week. We we do it without fail. If one of us is gone, um, I uh, Catalina uh, will will post. Um, and but I I always do the cards. Um, I think that in the entire time I've only missed one week, and that's when I was. Um, in Canada my dad was in the hospital so we do this like really really religiously every single week um, so you know that that we're gonna do it and we'll be there so I would love to see your cards um, I think I need to wrap this up because now I am just rambling so I hope you guys all have a good day oh let me check questions yes 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 okay does anyone have any questions thank you everyone who came here today
Um, there are no questions. Oh, Janine has sent me a video to watch later. I will go watch that later. Um, okay. Oh, and um, someone said, hope oh, my father is feeling better. Yes, he is. That, when he was in the hospital, it was over a year ago. And um, actually, it was a year ago. And I just went to visit him in October and um, this year. And he is doing really well, um, considering he was on life support. And um, they were telling us they weren't sure if he was going to make it. So it's fabulous. He's walking and talking he's not driving but he knows where he's going and he tells my mom when she's driving it's kind of fun to watch and uh um she'll she has nowhere has no idea where she's going so she'll be like driving down the street is it here where i turn and he'll say no and she'll turn anyway right and uh of course that's not where she wanted to go and my dad's just like i told you you know, so it's kind of funny to see the two of them in action because my dad drove a lot um, for the family for all his life. And now my mom's driving and the the combination of the two of them is quite funny to watch. Um, but anyway, so, yes, my dad is, is doing much better and, um, you know, he can't do everything he used to do. But I... I am happy that I can help him do some things while I'm there. He was an electrician and um, uh, he's like fabulous at doing that stuff. So I was helping him with some electrical stuff. So I, I felt like that was so cool that I could be his hands. He had to tell me what to do. And I was like so much slower than him. And I know he was like thinking in the back of his brain, Brenda, just do it. And I was like, ah, just like really slowly stripping the wires off the, the ends off the wires and stuff. And, and he was like, I know I could do that in a second. That's taking you 30 seconds, but he was patient. And, um, I was able to, to do the things that he asked me, like his brain is like still all there. It's just like, he doesn't have the same strength as he did before, but, but he's, He's awesome. So anyway, I did ramble and I hope you guys have a good week and I hope you guys will join us on the Facebook group. I want to see some cards. So uh, um, join us and do that. All right. You guys have a fabulous week. Take care. Bye bye.